Today, I'm on the Payette River, north of Boise, on Highway 21, and I'm looking at some dark rocks that are cutting the granite, the local granite. So I'm looking at this dark rock here that is cutting the local granite, and it, it looks something like this, with dark minerals in it, and the rock that it's is cutting through something like this with light minerals in it. I'm looking at quite a bit of granite and uh, it's light colored, but in places like right up here, you can see the dark rock cutting it. And down at the base here of this fairly major road cut on the Highway 21 on the Payette River, you can see here, a mafic dike cutting in a northeast southwest direction through the granite. And uh, just a few feet farther down the road cut, here is another dark band of rock cutting up through the lighter colored rock. So this is granite and um, the Payette River. And right here, you might see a dark mafic dike cutting vertically through granite. Here is a granddaddy wide mafic dike in granite. Here are some smaller black dark dikes. Here are some more smaller ones. Beautiful waterfall. And another dark dike cutting through the granite. These black dikes are all near the town of Loman. This is the Payette River and I'm north of uh, Boise on Highway 21 and here is another black mafic dike cutting up through the granite. Here is the granite with large feldspars. It's the Idaho batholith. You can see some of the feldspars reflecting on their cleavage here and reflecting sunlight perhaps. And here is a black mafic dike cutting and the contact here is rather sharp. Here's the mafic rock rather fine-grained. And here is the granite, and the contact here is rather sharp. I'm above the Payette River here, and this is granite of the Idaho Batholith, the lighter colored base material here, the, the country rock. It's an intruded by black fracture filling mafic material that looks like basalt. I'm on the Payette River. I'm looking at the Idaho Batholith granite and I'm looking at mafic dikes that cut through the granite, came up later. And here's one here. You can see this black rock with a very sharp contract, contact with the granite and it cuts up through vertically through this uh, granite. Well, what am I going to do? There are a lot of these. <laughs> am I going to, is this, okay, you get it. This guy, is this guy going to show you every dark mavic dike in the Idaho Batholith? Um, near uh, north of Boise? No, I'm going to go to the other side 
of the Idaho Batholith and show you some other dikes very similar that have also cut up through the Idaho Batholith at a younger time. And move 150 miles northeast. I'm on um, US 93 in Montana on the Montana side of Lost Trail Pass and I'm looking at black dikes cutting the country rock. Let's go and have a look over here. Click a sharp contact, fine grain, dark, and uh, looks like here's the, this is granite, and uh, here is the, the fine grained dark material and a pretty sharp contact. This dark rock is dipping a little bit to the west. And, uh, but it's pretty vertical and oriented north, northeast, south, southwest. I'm on US 93 on the Montana side of Lost Trail Pass, and here are some vertically cutting dark mafic dikes. I'm on uh, US 93 on the Montana side of Lost Trail Pass, and that looks like some um, cross cutting dark mafic material in a dike. This is a place called Sula in Montana. It's at the headwaters of the Bitterroot River, south of Hamilton, south of Missoula. And I'm looking at a dark mafic sill here that has cut the gray granite at a later date and um, injected probably into a fracture some dark mafic rock that looks like this and the contact is rather sharp here is the granite here is the dark mafic it's about a meter thick and then more granite All this granite is located in the Middle Rockies in a batholith that had partly cooled and fractured. We're looking at the green color here and it's the Idaho batholith of granite and it was cut by these dark, thin, fracture-filling dikes after it had formed. In this image, look to the left, you'll see this dark brown accreted terrain. That has something to do with these. Geologists looking for gold and base metals over the years have identified structures like this and called them the Trans Chalice Fault System or the Great Falls Tectonic Zone, and they find ore bodies along these structures. I move 60 miles northwest. This is the Loxaw River, and on Highway 12 in Idaho, mile marker 35 or so and here's a horizontal band in the rock right across here of mafic material in the Idaho batholith granite we are here on um, in Montana at Lost Horse Overlook Loman and the Payette River are 160 miles in that direction. Um, we stopped at Lost Trail Pass, 40 miles in that direction. Uh, made another stop uh, over Lolo Pass, 45 miles in that direction. And here we see 
evidence of upward movement in the crust by an, the igneous granite of the Idaho Batholith. And if we look at uh, up close, you can see the myelinite texture of this rock. It has uh, milled and uh, slipped. A conceptual framework of how the Idaho batholith may have formed would be as a magmatic arc, where ocean crust, denser than continental crust, subducts at a convergent plate boundary. Green here is the mantle. The green mantle is silicate rock. The orange is higher in silica. That's continental rock. This blue ocean crust is driving the convergence of plates here because this sheet of dense rock is sinking into the mantle, pulling the plate behind it. And here comes some more continental silicate rock. Along the boundary here are going to be ocean sediments scraped off, lots of thrust faulting in here, and metamorphism. Water is going to get down and uh, lower the melting temperature of these rocks. It's going to be hot, and here is that is going to be basalt, but that's going to be too dense to rise. It's going to evolve into more silicate rich rocks like andesite or granite. As subduction continues, pulled down by this dense ocean plate sinking into the mantle, convergence brings in the continental crust compressing this area and the granite is kind of trapped. It heats to over 700 degrees. In the late stages of subduction, the continental crust or accreted terrain here cannot go down into the mantle. It's too buoyant. And that slab, that ocean crust breaks off and that destabilizes dynamically the evolving granite, which rises, and there's gravity sliding off the top. These fractures then are filled with basalt from below, that's generated from below, and that's what these dikes are. They're fractures, extensional fractures, filled quickly with basalt from below. Hope you like this video. See you next time.